So today we'll be going over Mohr's circle, which is nothing more than a graphical representation of the plane stress transformation and actually uh, makes it a little bit more simple to solve for the principal stresses as well as the maximum shear stress to be developed in addition to knowing the angles at which the principal stresses and the maximum shear stress occurs. So let me first go ahead and draw more circle to begin. So here we have a graph with two axes. The, the horizontal axis is the stress while the vertical axis actually represents the shear stress. Now one thing to be aware of the shear stress axis is actually opposite where the bottom of this axis is positive and the top portion would be negative. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And this is what we refer to as Moore's circle where every each and every one of these points represents the sigma x prime and sigma y prime for every possible rotation of the element. Some important things to note here, from the start of the axis, right, our origin point, to the center of Moore's circle would be the average normal stress, which is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 is equal to the average stress. So that's one important thing to remember. Additionally, the top or the bottom of the circle here actually represents the maximum shear stress. So plus or minus, right? At the top portion of the circle is going to be the negative maximum shear stress. At the bottom is going to be positive maximum shear stress. And when it comes to the principal stresses, they will lie on the sigma axis, right? So on either of the ends, you're gonna have the principal stress one and principal stress two here because remember keep in mind sigma one is always going to be greater than sigma two so here's where the principal stresses of the element will lie on this this axis and of course like any other circle this one has a radius which we call it r and the specific equation for this is r is equal to the square root of sigma x take away sigma y divided by 2 squared plus tau x y squared and this is going to be the equation that you're going to be using to solve for the radius of this circle here so drawing out here a plane stress element with the stress and along the x direction y direction and tau x y as well I just want to give you a better idea how it looks more graphically represented on Moore's circle. So when this element is in its normal state, right, not being rotated by any degrees, it would lie somewhere along Moore's circle, right? So let's go ahead and plug in the data points here. So for the first point along this axis, right, the stress axis and the shear stress, this is where the point sigma x tau x y would lie on similarly on the opposite end here we would have sigma y negative tau x y here and so one thing that's very important that you see once it's graphically represented the the state of stress of an element that has not been rotated right in other words the angle theta is zero degrees would lie along this point, these two points on more circle. But the points sigma x and sigma y are off by 180 degrees, right? But in the element itself, they're only off by 90 degrees. So what this means is graphically, and this holds true when it comes to principal stresses, um, for the graphical representation is going to be two theta is equal to 180 degrees. Essentially, if you rotate the element, let's say by 10 degrees, that means graphically it would actually rotate by 20 degrees. Just like the principal stresses, they're off by a 90 degree angle, but in the more circle, they will be off by 180 degrees. And to compensate for this, this is where we have the relationship to theta p is equal to 180 
degrees just to make sure we have that translate over to the graphical representation. So now once you have all the necessary information, you calculate your radius, you calculate the average um, normal stress, and you're able to graphically plot it on more circle, from then it's pretty straightforward to solve for the pr principal stresses for both one and two, and also to determine the maximum shear stress because at this point it just becomes nothing more than geometry, as well as when it comes to solving for the angles in which the principal stresses will occur, then it will be nothing more than normal trig since we have this radius value. This would be the shear stress, right? And then we could solve for this unknown angle. In this case, let's just name it alpha. So more circle is nothing more than a graphical representation of the plane stress transformation. And instead of relying on the equations and solving for the angles, this simplifies it into just a plain circle. And applying trig functions, you're able to solve accordingly for the principal stresses, the maximum shear stress. Um, so it's a lot simpler to solve for without having to remember numerous equations. In this case, we just have to memorize the radius equation and everything else would come into play and it will be just trig here to solve for any unknown such as the angle alpha and the principal stresses one and two as well as the maximum shear stress. So let's go ahead and do a problem to further understand this concept. For this problem statement, we have the state of stress at a point is shown on the element. Determine A, the principal stress, and B, the maximum in-plane shear stress and average normal stress at the point using more circle. So this one's actually a similar problem we solved for the plane stress transformations video. And in this case, we're going to be using more circle instead of using the equations to solve for the plane stress transformations. So let's go ahead and see what we have. We only have a compressive stress here of 30 KSI and a negative shear stress because it's downward on the y direction here of 12 KSI. So we see that sigma x is equivalent negative 30 KSI, sigma y is equal to zero, and the shear stress is negative 12 KSI. So this is where we first off go ahead and solve for the radius of Mohr circle. So this is the equation for the radius of Mohr circle. Let's go ahead and solve accordingly. So R is 19.2 KSI and then solve for the average normal stress and we get negative 15 KSI. So now with the average normal stress we're able to identify the location of the center of more circle and then with the with the radius we're able to draw out more circle so let's go ahead and graph it so drawing the axis keep in mind the normal stress here is along the horizontal and the shear stress is going to be positive going downward and negative going upward and so we see that the average normal stress is negative 15 so it's going to be on the negative side and let's say this is negative 15 ksi so this is where the center of more circle is going to be from the vertical axis. And we know that the radius of this is 19.2 KSI. So right off the bat, we already have what's the maximum shear stress developed, right? In this case, doing the graphical method, we're able to see maximum shear stress is in fact that radius. So maximum shear stress developed on this element when it's rotated is plus or minus 19.2 KSI with the average normal stress being negative 15 KSI here. So how about the principal normal stresses? Well, we see we have sigma one line here and we have sigma two over here. And so from the center of the circle to the first principal stress would be the radius, right? But to know what value sigma one is, we would need to determine this length over here, right? So sigma one is obviously the radius plus the average stress, which gives us 4.2 KSI. And the second principal stress is equal to the average normal stress take away the radius, right? Because in this case, we're going negative 15, then another minus R over here. So it's the average minus the radius, which gives us 
negative 34.2 KSI. So you see with the graphical method, once you solve for the radius and the average um, normal stress here and graph more circle, it's really straightforward to solve for what the principal stresses are as well as what, what is the maximum shear stress developed of the element. And this is exactly what the problem statement asks us to solve for the principal stresses as well as the maximum shear stress and the average stress. Now, when it comes to solving for the angles itself, this is where you you would be plotting your original sigma x, sigma y, and the tau xy onto this circle. And from there, you could use trig to solve for any unknown angles and solve for what, at what angle do you have your principal stresses as well as what angle do you have your maximum shear stress.